Transformation. Almost every company, every organization, every NGO, every association, when you go there, you will hear, let's transform the organization. I would love to see a show of hands. Who of you is going through an organizational transformation, association transformation at the moment? Can I see a show of hands? All right. That's, that's the TEDx crowd. It's almost like 60, 78 percent here that's going through the transformation. I want to explore organizational transformation a little bit with you. And as we know, transformation is easy, right? How do you do? How do you transform? First of all, what you need to have is a picture with a caterpillar and a butterfly. <laughs> yeah? Then you put Comic Sans Serif on it and say, if nothing ever transformed, there would be no butterflies. <laughs> That's the start. And then, of course, you add beanbags. That's very important. So into the organization so that it's a cozy work environment. Post-its are extremely important <laughs> in every kind of a transformation. Yeah, so you go on and trust it, post it. Yes. And last but not least, table football. <laughs> Everything. That needs to be there as well. All three, and that's it, right? That's normally all that takes to transform an organization. Right? Well, maybe yes, maybe not. For all of you who are going through a transformation, you might know that there are also some challenges involved in this one. What are some of those challenges? The first one is distrust. You look at each other and say, like, another transformation that's going on? What are they up to these days? What is this all about? The other one, of course, is what we call transformation fatigue, basically. You say, another one, another one, what are they up to, what is it going on, and so on. And, of course, then there's the special challenge, which we call the dragging of the people, basically. Sometimes you really need to drag everybody around so that they really, really come along with the transformation. Transformation is a special challenge, and I want to explore that further with you today. And I really do think when we think about transformation, it all starts with leaders, with the leaders who lead that transformation. So I want to take you on a journey, on a journey in a normal boardroom, meeting room, leadership room, and so on, where these leaders discuss. So where they discuss, you can, be, you can rest assured where there is the discussion, they go, okay, transform, transform, transform. And then at one stage, at one point, you will hear a special sentence. Somebody says, come on, guys, let's think outside the box. <laughs> yeah, you've all seen this, you've all heard it. There is something special about this box. We all love that statement. Somehow, lots of people love this box. There seems to be something wrong with the box. So people think, let's think outside of that box, and that will solve our problems. Now, today, I want to put a challenge out to you. I would say, Look, it's not outside the box where transformation happens. Actually, I do think great transformation starts with leaders who think inside the box. That might be controversial to you, but let's explore a couple of boxes. And I will share with you first why. Why is that? Let's look at one stage. Let's look at two elements. Let's look at confusion level in an organization and, for instance, information level in an organization. So we all know when we go through a transformation and we don't hear anything, we don't have any information going on, confusion level is quite high. We also know when we are constantly bombarded with all kinds of information, confusion level is quite high. But there is a sweet spot. Somewhere in between, there is a sweet spot. And I think leaders can capture that sweet spot in their transformation. They can create a box around this and really think inside that box to really have that confusion level relatively low. How do we do that? I want to share with you three boxes that we can all use for transformation. Let's start with the first one, which is a time box. Time boxing is a very, very powerful thing that we can use as individuals, but also for organizational transformation. We all know the power of a deadline. Now, Harry Shearer once said, I'm one of those people who thrive on deadlines. Nothing brings on inspiration more readily than desperation. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that we all know, right? It is. Yes, it is that desperation, that, that da, 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 oh, we have to really, really now do it. And actually, we can capture this. Some of the techniques that are out there, and one of my favorite techniques, I'll say, is the whole thing of the hackathon. Inspired by the software industry and software teams, where they get together for one day, two days, three days, and try to work in a time box of this with a key factor of creating something. It's not about meetings, it's not about long talks, it's about creating something. Something tangible needs to be an outcome. 
And I think we can all integrate this also if we are outside of the software industry. It's a very, very powerful thing what happens when the clock is ticking and you need to work something. It's not like, okay, let's create a pen, let's create a PowerPoint. No, let's get going and the energy starts flowing. And I was discussing this with one of the organizers of one of the largest hackathons in the world, which is Hack Belgium, actually. They tried to bring together 1,000 people to work together for three days. He was, he was telling me something interesting. He was like, you know, thinking out, when you think outside the box, anything is possible. And that's a real problem. <laughs> that anything is possible because nothing gets done. People go like, okay, yo, no, let's explore that. Let's talk to this person and so on. So what he says, you know, the role of the time pressure here is very powerful. The role of the time pressure is to advance people forward. It pushes you to make a decision. That's what you often say. And that's the power of the time box. And that's where lots of organizations have started to do that, to that hackathon culture, so to speak, by putting time boxes around transformation work. It cuts off all of the blah, blah, and everything, and gets results going. Actually, you can also do that individually. If you want to leverage the power of time boxing for you, you can do that. As we know, in this day and age, if you want to be successful at anything, it's around about 10% talent, and around about 90% not being distracted by the internet, by mobile phones, by YouTube videos, and so on. That is one of the challenges. And I face that a lot when I do my writing. I'm always like, oh, yeah, I could, I could open up this email. Oh, and your email comes here. Let me read that. Now, we can work also with a box here. I've started to work, actually, especially for my writing, with a special box, also with a time box. I give myself always 15 minutes. And I purchased a simple hourglass with it. And while that hourglass is going down, while the sand is trickling down, somehow all of the options, all of the other things go away. And I was something like, oh, I need to put my words down here before that sand is, is coming down. Very simple, very simple ideas on how to create a time box for yourself. The second box that I think leaders can work in transformation is the space box. Now, I have a special challenge for you. Think about the following. What if I ask you, write down your vision now? Some of you would go like, yes, I go, da, 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 that's what it's about. Some others are more like, uh, <laughs> what should I do now? What should I say now? And that is happening with a lot of people. That's happening quite often. You're like, oh, what, 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 what do they want me to do? Well, what can help here is space boxing. And there are a couple of space box outs and have been for centuries. What are some examples for this? One of them is the 50-word poems challenge that was put out there. So again, if I were to ask you, write on a poem, you're like, what? But write on a 50-word poem, that already gets a little bit easier. Okay, it's 50 words that are somehow need to arrange. And there is like a large body of 50-word poems that you can find and research for. Ancient examples exist as well. The famous Japanese haikus is also a space box. What is a haiku? It always should follow 17 syllables in a certain structure. And what people then take is like these type of structures and fill them in. But the structure is given, the space box, so to speak, is given. One of my absolute favorite ones is the six-word story. That's a challenge given by Ernest Hemingway. He said, can you tell a story in six words? And the internet is full of examples of the six-word stories, and it's a very powerful thing of very short uh, storytelling and a short space boxing. My favorite examples for this one, some of the examples that you can find, is I'm getting better at being worse. So to speak, one of the examples that somebody came back with a six-word challenge with a six-word story. Let it go and see what stays. And my favorite, torch the haystack, found the needle. <laughs> Which says it all, basically, in some ways, about transformation and disruption. Very powerful things in just six words. And what it does, what do these six words do? Well, they limit us, and we start to see only what's happening in this six-word structure. Very powerful. So, again, if I were to ask you, write down your vision, you would be like, hmm. But maybe if I were to ask you, and maybe also from this day here today, write down your vision in six words into that box, it gets maybe a little bit easier. Already you can say, it's just six words that I need to do, and then I need to think about, and that gets easier. And who knows, when you do that, I mean, whenever I do that with leaders who go through a transformation, they come up with amazingly creative things. And maybe you can come as well up with something amazing and interesting as well in just six words. The gold standard of this is, of course, for always and has been for a long time, Steve Jobs' famous vision for his first iPod, which was, of course, a thousand songs in your pocket, which is also six words. This is the power of space boxing, so to speak. It limits us, 
And what Jim Ron once said, there are only three colors, 10 digits and seven nodes. It's what we do with them that's important. So what the space box allows us, it limits our resource, but we can actually then take and combine. How can you do that also in transformation? Well, you can ask simple questions, maybe with the team. You can ask like, look, what would we do differently if we next year had only, if we were to shift 90% of that budget away from this and this investment here, if we had only 10% less, how would we operate here? How would we operate differently? Simple questions. But one of my favorite examples of somebody used space boxing or resource boxing, as I would also call it, is a startup that started in 2009. And they had the idea, wouldn't it be great to build satellites? Very aptly, they're called Skybox. And they gave themselves the challenge, let's build a satellite with only commercially available parts that you can buy in a hardware store. And they did. That is also a box that you put yourself in and that transforms the thinking. Very powerfully, they were acquired by Google a couple of years ago. So that is the power of space boxing that you can do. Now for the third one, for the third box that I want to share with you, I have to share a little passion of mine or a passion project of mine. I always, I love it when I see people, artisans, and craftsmen passionate about their work. You know, when they craft that violin and so on, I love to see that. Now, I work mostly in modern work environments, in office environments, and I was always thinking, how can we create that same type of passion into our days where we have emails, meetings, reports, and all this, where the feeling very often is a little bit like this, much more, where you go like, okay, so can I create this as well? And I do think it is possible to some degree. And how? With a third box, which I would call the ritual box. What is a ritual box? Well, where you fix a way of doing things, a way of approaching things. And you say, like, that is the way we do it. That's what we think inside that box, and then we approach it. Some examples for this that are out there is one is Toyota's A3 thinking. Toyota has that challenge that say, like, all thinking, so to speak. All projects have to be summarized on an A3 page. And when I talk to Toyota engineers, they really said, like, I put this almost to an art form. I really try to optimize everything here. That makes it, fits it into that A3 platform. Everybody's pushing themselves to make it like the, so to speak, the perfect A3. I was raised in the Procter and Gamble culture, so to speak, it used to have a one-page memo. That used to be an art form in itself, where you say, can you communicate whatever it is, that investment proposal, that change proposal, whatever it is, in one page maximum, without going to Arial 3, there was the font size was also fixed, and so on. <laughs> now, can, can you communicate that? And we had revisions, and everyone pushed that to really come up with a great, great, great example for this. And probably the easiest one to implement, and also a very powerful one, were debating formats that some innovation teams use, and where I was also once exposed to. I presented my, my idea, and then one person stood up and said, like, OK, now for two minutes, what speaks against Lars's idea? And I was looking at what's, what's, what's happening here. And he was like, no, this is bad, this is bad, and this goes down, and we can't do that. And so I was like, what's happening here? After two minutes, another person stood up and said, like, yes, but what speaks for Lars's idea? Bam, one, two, three, four things. And what they said was like, no, we have a debating culture. We take everything apart in two minutes, and we really prepare for this one as well, to really, really live that pro and con culture as well. That is another ritual box that you can have. When you do that, when you're established, such a box around a framework, structure, and process, interesting things can happen. Again, if we go back to that confusion level that we had, what happens there very often if we bring in creative people, into, like, like experts in their field, if you bring them together, what you don't want is their fight over how do we best approach this right now? Uh, how do we do that? And that's what many, many times, many meetings and so on are spent on. How do we best do that? No, you want to have that ritual box so that it's very clear, so that, that people full of energy, full of expertise can go very fast very deep and really find maybe the really transformational ideas. Brenton Burchard once says, to rise higher, go deeper. And that is what a ritual box, what fixing that, so to speak, does with us, fixing a certain process of how we approach things. So I've shared three boxes with you, time boxing, space or resource boxing, and ritual boxing. These are three ways, I would say, where you can start your transformation by thinking inside that box. If you think now, like, okay, maybe I want to start my own box. How do I create a box? Well, I throw in a fourth box for you. And that is, again, inspired by the software world. What is that? A sandbox. What is the sandbox, or what is sandboxing? Well, sandboxing, you basically say, when you create a piece of code, you let it run in a virtual sandbox where it can't do any harm. But I would use that as a metaphor. 
as a metaphor for life in general, where you say, I would recommend everybody, every leader certainly, but everybody to have their own sandbox, where you can try out regularly new things. You build them without doing any harm. You take a group of friends, group of colleagues, and so on, and test out maybe that new routine, that new process, that new thing. And while you wait on it, you try to wait until you really find something really, really that works. So I recommend to have like your own experiment once a month and so on, to really see, like, do I have maybe one box and so on that works for me? in that sandbox itself. And once you've found something where you say like, hey, here really for our organization, for our team, for myself, I have something that really works, either time box, space box, resource box, whatever box it is, then comes a key task. Then you say like, okay, now I put that to the organization. And that's what great leaders do then. They create these boxes in their sandboxes and find the ones that work. And then they put a stick in the ground and say, like, okay, that is a box that we do right now. And then defend them as well. In the time boxing, somebody would say, like, oh, yeah, let's maybe go a little bit outside or something like this. No, you try to defend that as well and say, like, no, it's one day that we work on this one and we get the results. So if you want to transform not only your organization, but maybe also some approaches that you do, what I recommend you to do is you want to transform, create a box, and then maybe also think inside that box. Happy boxing for all of you. Thank you.